Hi, my name's Ariana. In 2016, I started my first business with a friend, an events company that combined live music with wellness. I was fascinated with creating experiences that immerse the senses whilst improving people's well-being. However, two years into running my first business, something happened that shook me. One of my younger brother's best friends committed suicide when he was 15 years old. Then, two friends' brothers also committed suicide. All of this happened within the space of six months. During this strange time, I contemplated a lot. I looked around at the work I was doing in the world of wellness, a world that has mental health and mindfulness tools coming out of its ears, only to painfully realise that 90% of people who had access to these tools are not the people who need it most. Men have alarmingly higher suicide rates compared with women. In the United States, the UK and Canada, men have a suicide rate of three to 7.5 times that of women. Simultaneously, as I observed, we live in a society where mind management tools such as therapy, counselling and mindfulness are available, but culturally do not resonate with millions of people, especially young men. Something isn't adding up. I became obsessed with figuring this out, which has led me to do the work I'm doing now, work which I truly believe can make an impact in society. I believe that music combined with mindful practices can save lives. During the following few minutes I have with you, I'd like to discuss three major realizations I've made in the last couple of years, trying to understand and potentially help alleviate the male suicide epidemic. They fall under these three categories. Masculinity, mindful practices such as meditation, mindfulness, therapy, group experiences and more, and then thirdly, the crux of this talk, music. These three things might not seem related, but please do bear with me. So firstly, I'm going to talk about the concept of masculinity. Many men are taught from a young age that they should inhabit an identity that only demonstrates traits of socially perceived masculinity. Otherwise, one would not be considered a man. Now, I believe that this audacious act of oppression forces many men to betray healthy characteristics of their own innate identity for fear of judgment. Unless we discuss and dismantle the patriarchal structures that men are normalised into and feel bound by, the same cycle will continue. A report by the Samaritans listed masculinity as a contributing factor to male suicides. This report explains that men are more likely to respond to stress by taking risks, such as alcohol or drug misuse, and have higher emotional illiteracy cases. Men are also less likely to have a positive view on therapy or counselling, only using the services at a point of crisis, if at all. Social justice expert Jonathan Higgins explains that the root definition of what it means to be a man or to perform masculinity in America continues to be grounded in oppression, marginalisation and white supremacy. He adds that young cisgendered men normalise into ideas of masculinity from such an early age that they go on throughout life dismissing other parts of themselves that make them whole. Identity traits labelled as feminine, such as caregiving, kindness and emotional availability, are rejected and even feared for fear of condemnation by other men. Higgins believes that damage is done to young cisgendered men whereby healthy traits of their identity are stripped before they have understood the importance of occupying a whole spectrum of personal characteristics. This correlation is supported by the research by the Samaritans, which states that the influence of a historical culture of masculinity is one of the most dominant aspects of the various complex factors affecting male suicide rates. 
being groomed by society, including sometimes one's own family, to only and always occupy society's perceived symbols of masculinity has proven to be not only destructive to others through sexism, racism and homophobia, but also deadly for those men themselves. In this same study by the Samaritans, they state that men are far more likely than women to turn to music or sports to relieve stress than speak to others. So why don't we work with this information? Why don't we create mental health habits and practices that meet people where they are at? Speaking of habits, we all know now that looking after our mind is just as important as looking after our body. We go to the gym, not because we're injured, but to prevent future injuries. This is exactly what we all should be doing with our minds. So next, I'd like to talk about mindful practices. The first thing to mention though, is that I believe that the most well-known mindful practices, namely mindfulness and meditation, are in fact deeply misunderstood. Let's take meditation, for example. The word meditation actually stems from meditatum, a Latin term that means to ponder. I find it interesting because we typically think meditating is clearing the mind of all thoughts when in fact pondering isn't really that at all. In India, the birthplace of meditation, the practice is vaguely referenced as the training of the mind. And in China, it roughly translates to guarding the middle, guarding tranquility and embracing simplicity. So as you can see, the understanding of mindful practices are pretty ambiguous. However, what we do know is that it has most likely been around since the beginning of human existence. Fossil records suggest that anatomically modern Homo sapiens split from the Neanderthals about 200,000 years ago. Around that same time, early humans practiced shamanistic meditation rituals to help heal the sick. The psychologist Matt Rossano argues that the deep focus achieved during these rituals strengthened parts of the brain involved in memory. And recent brain research actually supports this. Rosano suggests that as neural areas of attention grew stronger, the minds of subsequent generations be became better equipped to hold information and make the connections necessary in modern working memory. So as you can see, mindful practices might well have been the thing that helped humans become the intelligent species we are today. These practices or rituals are a part of being human. Songs in unison, chanting, prayer, intention setting, focused movement, focused stillness. All of these practices get us into a state of calm, trance, connectedness. All creative individuals practice forms of mindful rituals by getting into a state of flow. Creativity itself is a product of meditation. These ways of being are inside us by default and they are so important to practice, otherwise we can risk feeling disconnected, unvalued and unhappy. The sad thing is that now in modern times, mindful practices such as mindfulness and meditation have been commodified and wrapped in a culture that excludes those who need it most. When you commodify something, you do it so that it sells. And in marketing psychology, the predominant consumer is a 25-year-old-plus middle-class woman because they're most likely to be a wife and a mother making spending decisions for more than just themselves. This is the demographic that the wellness industry, including meditation and mindful, mindfulness, has marketed at for decades. So now we live in a reality where many young people, especially young men, but also many other demographics, don't even consider trying it because they've never seen anyone like them doing it. My team and I at Spoke interviewed over 300 18 to 25 um, year old young men and over 90% of them said that they didn't believe meditation is for them. 
It's so clear that the representation of most mental health management practices are wrapped in a culture that simply does not resonate with those who identify more towards an identity of masculinity. And the way to solve this problem is to start innovating from the root, create new practices that do relate, working with people and mediums that can connect. Finally, let's discuss music. What can I say? We all love it. We all have our favourite genres and artists. It is what it is, right? Well, maybe not. I've always had a suspicion that there's a lot more to music and sound than we realise. Years ago, the European space mission Planck picked up a sound that has been travelling through the universe since the beginning of time. This sound right here. An ancient celestial sound. 13.8 billion years before our universe existed, we were just a ball of hot plasma. Electrons, protons, light. As the Big Bang happened, it was sound waves that actually sculpted our galaxy formation. In simple terms, music made us. Fast forward billions of years, the very first humans would mimic the galactic sounds heard in the night sky through their calls, and then they'd use these tones to tune the first musical instruments. Sound waves and frequencies are a part of what it means to be alive. Our brains are tuned to music far more than we even realise. Just think about how every culture and tradition around the world shows its identity through its music. It's now been proven that functional sound, so the careful utilisation of the right sounds and frequencies, can literally heal our minds and our bodies. Einstein once quoted, future medicine will be the medicine of frequencies. And I really do believe he was right. Additionally, it's widely accepted that musicians are the most influential people for young people today. But I think musicians have always been the most influential people. Think about it. Our stories have carried on through songs. We always look to the artist to feel resonance and inspiration. The irony is that musicians today face some of the worst mental health of all professions and are actively trying to make a change. So you can actually see this in the sharp increase in lyrics that reference mental health in recent years. I believe that our society does not harness or value or maybe even understand the true power of music and musicians. This belief in the power of music and musicians is the central philosophy at my organisation, Spoke, where we harness it as a tool to influence better mental health practice for those who are left out of the traditional wellness industry. The big question is, can we go so far as to design the way our culture can evolve for optimal mental wellness? And I think we can. My suggestion is as follows. I believe we can break this culture of toxic masculinity down at the root by working with the gatekeepers of culture. Artists, musicians, revolutionaries, those who can touch the soul of humanity through their work and influence young people to feel open and comfortable practicing emotional support. Then we need to help people find a mindful practice that actually resonates, find their rhythm and ways to release emotion. Just like the early humans, our brains evolve through mindful practices. We release emotion by moving the body, meditating, expressing ourselves, focused intention. By combining music with proven mindful practices, then leveraging off of influential music culture, we might be able to shift into a culture that normalises these important practices for the next generation of young people, especially young men. Our work at Spoke does exactly all of this. We work with the world's best musicians to innovate the sound, the culture, and the overall practice of mindfulness. 
We believe that this could have the power to help millions of people look after their minds, which in turn can save lives and may even change the world. I'm going to leave you with this. Ask yourself what the music you listen to does for you. How do different songs make you feel? If you haven't yet, create a playlist of songs that bring your heart rate down and into a state of calm or trance. Also, now that you understand mindfulness and meditation a little better, please just try it. Just do a Google search and keep trying different types until you find one that really resonates with you. You're of course also welcome to join us at spoke.world and try ours too. Last but not least, if you're a young man yourself, or if you have a little brother, older brother, cousins, friends, I encourage us all to leave the masculinity stereotypes and take notice of how much better it feels to just be you. Thank you. Mm -hmm.